Hey YouTubers, this is Killing A6, AK Raymond. Welcome to another Registration Mint Jugger Nuggets. Well, I guess we're going to find out what, uh, the truth of, about corn quitting uh, uh, Mint Jugger Nuggets uh, thing right here. You know, uh, I'm sure there, there was a subscriber that actually asked me, why don't you react to Corn's video about him quitting? Uh, the reason why I didn't, because I had a feeling that Jesse was actually going to do a video about him. Because I'm sure he was worried about doing the series that he was talking about. But... I knew he was going to talk about him. So, well, guys, without further ado, let's see how, um, let's see the deal about why Corn actually uh, quit. I just hope it's going to be a good story. Hey there, Jay. It's Jerome Powell and Jerry Nights here. Today, I was going to come out with some behind the scenes for me and Brian's Hollywood Hype series, but instead, I need to address something now that our mini series is over. Uh, this is actually something that... Oh, uh, oh I guess we're going to see that one later. This whole situation with Corn, why he quit. Um, I saw he did a couple of videos on this. And to be honest, I didn't think that would ever be the case. Um, I thought we kind of had a mutual understanding that a personal friendship and business matter, we wouldn't involve third parties, the, the whole entire internet. You know, let's, let's get everybody involved. Let's get as many people as possible. You know, let's call Jesse a dick and slander into his audience so so that I have people hating on me when, when people don't know the whole truth. So this was something I never wanted to happen. It's something I never wanted to do. Um, he could have just called me and we could have sorted this out like men, but um, instead I have to do a video response to this because now I have to explain my side because there's two sides to every story. And there's always there's that, truth. guys. So hopefully once you hear my side, you'll be able to determine what is the truth and you can kind of combine the two stories. It's just, it's just weird that this is happening now. You know, it's taken four months for him to come out and talk. And, and guys, that's weird. This isn't a series. This is very real. Uh, that's why I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one kind of thing. It, it just, it's, it's unfortunate that it has to come to this. You know, I told everyone that he wanted to be a cop. I wanted, I wanted to, um, it's a lot like a breakup. You know, I don't know if you've ever seen, you know, two YouTubers break up, a YouTuber and their girlfriend, or um, even oh. a band breaking up two friends. I've seen that. You prank versus that prank. That was a sad one. Public spotlight. People do need an answer, and that's why I said Corn was becoming a cop. Um, so people would not, you know, kind of pester either one of us. It would just be the kind of unspoken thing. It's like, you're probably a cop. That's it. Um, let's go our separate ways. But uh, things are different, so I'm not about to get into all of this. Uh, just, just some nerd call me a dick, and, you know, it, it sucks when, when your best friend says that about you. And puts it in front of the whole audience. It just, it sucks. But the box is open now. You know, guess, guess I'll have to break the silence. Hope you guys are ready. Sit back. I'm not going to split this into two parts. I don't see why that was necessary. Um, here we go. So Corn was my best friend for like 10 years. That That's true. Um, and, you know, we met through Halo 2, and we developed a relationship online gaming, and uh, then we started hanging out in person, you know, went to the same high school. You know, we played uh, soccer together for uh, some years, and, um, I have him over here all the time. He's one of those friends where I have him over like 10,000 times, and I'd only ever been to his house maybe like 10 times, most of which was in the series. And I'm not even counting the times that he was over to the series when he'd come to my house. It was like, you always have to pull and pull. Um, but he, he was a good friend. Uh, he was very loyal. You know, you'd always count on him to, um, to come over and hang out or do whatever, play some video games. It was a very chill relationship, you know, very, very innocent. So I got into YouTube, yeah, I was doing videos and stuff, and then Corn would be in there and help out, and he, and he was always around with the friends group and, and helping out with videos and stuff. So, so that's kind of like the history. Um, then let's catch up to when sort of the Psycho Series began. So the Psycho Series started becoming like really successful, and you know, I was doing a lot of videos by myself. Corn, Corn would help here and there uh, while trying to get something in his criminal justice field after college, and uh, it got to this point where, where Richard Sears was, was so big that I could afford to hire a cameraman, so Corn worked for me for maybe a, a month, an odd month here or there, um, and, and then he ended up finding a job at a corrections facility, which I, I was very happy for him, but I still needed a cameraman. Um, so it got to this point where, you know, uh, Eagles Landing happened, and was doing two videos a day, three videos a day, it got to be even larger than I, than I thought it would ever be. So I was able to afford uh, paying cameraman a little more. So I'd be hanging out with my friends, and I had this idea to offer it up to my friend Zach. I, I offered it up to, to Corn, and Corn was working at the prison, you know, making a certain amount of money. And I thought, okay, if I offered him a contract to work for me, 
for more money, maybe he would take it. Because I didn't need a cameraman. Corn was always around filming videos. So I thought, yeah, I could trust this guy. Um, and and I, I really could have ended up being anyone. Like, I offered it to other people as well. Uh, so it didn't necessarily have to be just Corn. It, it, it was anyone who wanted to take the job. So, so Corn was pretty men working at the prison. I mean, it's working at a prison. It's not glamorous. And, you know, there's a lot of hours and a lot of... It's also very dangerous, too. You know, you're working around inmates and stuff. And... I think that's that's creepy. Movies. That's like, scary. Like really just, Brave like, guy. Kind of drab. So um, I thought, you know, to work with me, it'd be a lot of fun holding the camera for your best friend. Uh, and guys, if you saw his video, the most important piece of the story that he's leaving out is how much he was paid. You know, you can't claim that you're being underpaid and that really? you need more money when you don't tell him. I actually saw the video, guys. I didn't want to react to it. It's hard to really trust that. He, he was really rude um, to him. him for a one year contract. He was making three grand a month. Uh, so total wow. $36,000 a year, which is a great. Wow. Movie. That's um, crazy. So I would love to be a cameraman like that. Been doing YouTube videos, um, and it was more than he was making at the corrections office. So, you know, he had to consult with his parents, which I totally understood. And I told him, I was like, you need to talk to your parents too. That's fine. He came back to me and he said he was, he was a little uh, afraid to make that kind of leap because, you know, criminal justice was his field in college and, and he was going to be, um, you know, in, in that field and hopefully moving up and he was using benefits. So the one thing he asked of me was, is, is there some way I can have some kind of job security? Um, because, you know, we don't know how the CG's going to pan out. And uh, I told him, I was like, look, I, I think I, I can guarantee you another year. So I included two years in the contract. Pretty much the first year, he'd be getting paid three grand. And then the second year, it would be renegotiation. And depending on his performance and everything, I'd give him a raise. But I definitely guaranteed at least another 36 grand for a second year. So I gave him that security. He signed on. And that was in September of 2015, kind of right in the heat of the series. So you know the history. You know how much he was getting paid now. Now let's talk about what he actually had to do. You know, what did the contract state? Um, pretty much it was just he operated the camera, he held the camera for me, um, you know, every day. And, and he was aware of the schedule that we had. And um, he, I also, you know, wanted ideas, if he ever had any, because it's difficult to come up with, you know, original ideas every single day, especially two videos. So, you know, I was always open to come with that. Uh, There's a part in there talking about, menial tasks required so like if i needed him to like say move the tripod from here to there or to get some props together or you know make things it kind of almost like a production assistant which i don't know if you guys know but but for as film as far as film goes the amount he was getting paid to hold the camera is pretty far up there like i know actually some producers like full-on news producers that make maybe around 20 to 30 grand a year so the fact that you know he's holding the camera for a youtube series and he's not even trained to do so you know he graduated criminal justice degree i could have very easily hired somebody who graduated from my college who was interested in film, but I wanted to go with my best friend who I'm trusted, and he did seem pretty mad about the prison, and I thought it could have been a lot of fun, and, and it was for for a good time. So how it would be is, say a day we had two videos a day, he would, I'd shoot him a text, and generally he knew around what time the day before, but say around like 2 p.m., so he got to sleep in, I'm like, I mean, that's crazy, like, we both got to sleep in, and, uh, you, know, you don't get that in most jobs. So we get started around two. It, it wasn't very difficult. At eight, you're just coming over to your friend's house. You don't got to dress up. You know, just roll out of bed, head over. And then we talk about what we need to film. I direct, and then we had to go somewhere. We'd go somewhere. Um, and then I direct, and he'd, I'd tell him what shots to get. I'd call them wow. money shots, and I'd be like, look, you need to film this, this, and this. So it's not even like he was coming up with what to film himself. Uh, he just had to carry out the tasks. And, um, we, we filmed for maybe 30 minutes to an hour. A lot of it was me directing, um, kind of setting, because a lot of it was one take. And then it got to this point where we finished the first video, I take it, I edit it all, I upload it, and, and while it's uploading or while it's saving onto my computer, we go and shoot the second one, and then it's the same drill. So, you know, we maybe work like five, six hour days. Um, and it's not even like he, in his video, he talks about how he never had a day off. Or he never had a break, he makes it sound like the most grueling shit ever. But honestly, yeah, it was day in, day out. Um, but it was only like five, six hour days in which, you know, he, he was sitting down uh, just listening and the rest was holding the camera. And it wasn't pretty much the videos that you see. That's the amount of time he was holding the camera. You know, some hmm. days we had uh, multiple takes on something, so well, not exactly. But, um, but yeah, he made it sound like he never had a day off. But, um, I mean, anybody can just go back and check the series where... I was going to see Juliet at, like, at least once every two weeks, and that'd be at least two days off there. I would also do uh, hashtag triple M and Q and A videos, which I would always do by myself. 
Um, so there's, you know, how much the hashtag triple M myself. There's also uh, fan mail towards the beginning. I would do by myself because I was able to lift it. But as my uh, pain got worse, uh, he would help with the fan mail. Like really, he just had to uh, kind of help move move uh, some of the boxes, which which isn't really that difficult. So he definitely had you know some free time. And once again, the hours, you know, five to six hours a day. Granted, you know, you had these weekends, and, and I'll get into more stuff uh, later on in this video. But it was. Um, he had, he had free time, and especially say we get done at like 8 or 9, you know, he's up till like 2 in the morning, you got 5 hours there, you got to like 5 hours in the morning before we even start. So 5 or 6 hours of work, if you do the math, say like 5 times 7, or 6 times 7, that's anywhere from 35 to 42 hours a week, that's almost the equivalent of a full-time job. So it ends up evening out, and the work, once again, it's, it's really not hard, and it's something that guys... I'm sure Sheesh. anybody would love to just fucking film videos of your best friend. It, it, it should have been a lot better than it felt for him, which which is a shame. I, I think it has to do with who he is and who I am, and, and it's it just not matching up. It just wasn't a good match. So one thing to make clear is that he, he was an employee of Rigid Studios. Um, you know, huh. He was an independent contractor. We weren't, uh, this is a really different time. story uh, from now. what he's telling about. But, uh, you know, hmm. He was an employee. He just was a camera operator. I, I was everything. I was the director. I was the writer. I was the editor. I was the. Uh, I was technically the cinematographer because I would say what shots to do. And you know, one thing he didn't do in his video was he didn't praise me at all. Like he, he almost like thought of me as like uh, like some kind of asshole or, or whatever. But like you I work with him. him. He did a good job, and it was something that like I saw. Yeah, Carl well, actually made him out to be a bad guy, and he's not. To say these things. It, He's a it, filmmaker. It he wants everything to be perfect. And, and I'm trying to be the bigger man and um, act like, you know, this stuff doesn't matter, but, but it hurts. I, I never got much of, of a thank you for, for this great opportunity, um, but I'll get into more stuff. Uh, sorry, guys, I'm rambling. It is just a lot to cover because uh, I never wanted this to get out there. I just don't think it's it's appropriate, but, but yeah, I, I did everything. I was the fuel to this whole operation. And he just had to follow direction well, and um, and we get the job done. And, and this this was my baby. I, 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 he he said that in the video, and I, I think he understood that. That uh, you know, I was extremely passionate and a very driven person. And something about Corn is that he's just a very quiet, um, unmotivated person. And, and really, the only reason I felt like he was doing this was, was for right. to be paid. Yeah. Which is a shame. Oh, come on. If you're going to work at a job, you want to get paid. That's how it works. That's why you want, that's why you have a, that's why you, you want a job. You want to get paid. And Corn was getting paid, so. It's important to understand. You know, he said he was doing it as a friend, but I mean, if you're doing it as a friend, you, you wouldn't be getting paid for it. So when he says that, it's just like, dude, like, what? I don't, I don't know. So it starts in September, um, and, and really that month, it was great because. What I told him was, I was like, look, man, uh, if you have an interest Sorry, in guys, videos, I just got off work. Um, I can structure a whole marketing plan to get your channel up and running. I can set everything up for you, uh, make, make sure it's super legit. You know, I, I pretty much drove him to create all these social media accounts. You know, I helped make them for him. I even came up with a storyline where I get kicked out and stay at his house so we can deploy his channel at the right specific time to get followers. And, you know, he blew up. He got, like, he's up to over 300,000 subs, a quarter of a million subs. And just while the series was going on, I think he racked up with maybe 7 to 8 million views collectively. So, you know, in addition to That's pretty his good. 36 grand salary, he also received a quarter of a million subs, 7 million, 8 million views collectively, which equals to maybe somewhere around 3,000 on the low end to, like, seven or eight thousand dollars in addition to that salary so that's pretty good 25k granted he's putting the work into those videos but he had the following because of how we deployed it and because it was related to mcdermott's channel similar you guys know from the other channels that we've released as well not to mention he got followings across the board on twitter and instagram and uh, even you know he, he was getting crazy amounts of twitch followers which i would push people to those i would be telling them you know giving shout outs something that wasn't required by me but i was being nice i wanted to you know do make this like really, really a cool partnership, and uh, he, he got Twitch, he got Twitch partnership, and he was able to make money on Twitch as well, which was incredible. You know, that's that's good. So what was the problem with him? Just get Twitch partnership, where people work for years to get. You know, I worked for fucking eight years until I actually saw some side, and and he's getting all like that. And I can say I think I can think it's easy to take that for granted, where he's getting a play button and shit. He's got a quarter million subs, so. 
you know, that kind of factors into it as well, I think. Not to actually even had a couple fangirls because of it, and uh, I think he's dating one currently, which, hey, I mean, can't go wrong there. That's great. So you got his channel, everything, you know, we're, we're getting towards the end of September, uh, you know, hanging out with Julia, taking days off, whatever. Construction series takes place. I'm feeling uh, pretty shitty. I, it was at, like, a really bad time for me pain-wise, which, which he made it sound like he, he thought it was fake until he found out that I had surgery for it. It's like, that was a real thing, and it hurt that he thought I was making shit up to have him do things, making it sound like a manipulative really? fuck. Which I think if you're really his friend, he would, you would know everything about him. Skin, then maybe he started to confuse me for the character that I portrayed. Because how I'm talking to you right now, this is real Jesse. Um... And, and, and I'm, I played an uphill battle because my character was, you know, very belligerent and just, just fucking ridiculous. I love him to death. I love my character, but, like, it, That's it, good. it's a loose cannon. So, you know, maybe there's there's a draw there. So we're getting into the construction series, you know. Anytime, I filmed the whole construction series, and uh, so he didn't even film that. He just did some little tasks labor-wise that I would tell him to do in the videos. Um, but really, what you see in the videos is not the truth. The truth of the matter is, Uncle Larry did fucking everything for that room. Like, he pretty much built that whole thing himself. You know, Mark did a little bit of work, and, and Corn did some work, but only as he was instructed to do so by me or, or Uncle Larry. And Uncle Larry pretty much fucking did 90% of that work. He built the whole fucking room. And that's Uncle Larry going to his day job, and then coming to help me film Brandon and his family, but, but Corn's getting paid for it, and it's just like, ah. So when it comes time to film, it was like, Corn be on his phone like 24 7. There was one time where my dad even looked over his shoulder at one point. Dude is blatantly ignoring me giving direction and, he, and he's scrolling through apps. He's not even looking, he's not He's not even looking at anything in particular. He's just scrolling through apps. And I was like, what the fuck? Just it sounds like that he's bored. Giving direction. And, and as a director, you know, you want your cameraman to understand 100% what the scene is. So they better know what to be zoomed in on, when they don't know what to focus on. There's a lot of times I'd repeat myself, or I'd be like, "Did you get that?" And he was looking at his phone, and I was like, "I don't think he necessarily got that." Like his heart wasn't in it. Once again, that's to the detriment. Uh, but I mean, at least you, you, you should be listening and respecting me when I'm talking, uh, which which was a, a I was always pulling it was very difficult, very difficult to work with. And, and one thing too is like I was talking about my character. Uh, you guys don't know Corn as a person, and I'm not gonna say shit, you know. Like, oh, he's just not a person, but, but once again, it's my perspective, and uh, if you guys want to know more, uh, just watch the videos on his channel, it, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty indicative of who he is, and, um, it, 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 he's not a bad guy, and I'm, I'm not a bad guy, it, it's just an unfortunate circumstance that took place, but yeah, he is a very quiet person, it's difficult to communicate with him, um, but you have to understand also, the corn that you know from the Psycho series was a character, he was the audience. He was the Samwise to my Frodo. So you guys are going to love him automatically. I mean, in a given scenario, obviously he wouldn't probably, he wouldn't at all, you know, fight Jeffrey off of me, you know, push him off and, and tap him for me. That's just not him. And, and also, like, he wouldn't, he wouldn't be doing the things he was doing. He, he was, he was a character in that series. So you guys don't know the real him. Just like you like, you, I think you guys know me by now because you've seen me enough times and you kind of see yes. through any character I'm playing. But just so you know, guys, once again, a lot of shit to cover here. I'm, a, I'm a, all one, though. All one, baby. So we're in the construction series right now in October. I'm glad he's doing fucking everything. There's this one night that um, Corn, Mark, and Larry were working, and my mom comes in, and it's just a check in how we're doing. And my mom just said something to Corn along the lines of, wow, like, you know, Mark's going a lot faster, Corn. And then Corn, dead serious, uh, gave her the middle finger. And my Whoa. mom burst into tears. And my mom left. And me and Larry and Mark just looked at each other and were like, what the fuck was that? Just flipped off. This was like a month or two in. Flipped my mom off. And I was like, what the hell? You know, like the night later, like my mom and dad were saying, like, look, you're going to have to fire him. We don't want him coming back in, into our house. My dad was very upset by that. I was upset by that. And I was like, look, Ma, you know, he's become a character in this, and he just signed on, and I, I think we would be wrong fire him. And, and, and my mom was like, look, like, I, like, you don't do that. You know, you don't flip, you don't, you don't flip somebody else's mom. My mom's the sweetest woman alive, and, and just, it, there was, like, a lot of, like, Oh, if anybody did that to like, my like, mom, <laughs> ooh. Even though you wouldn't do that to somebody else's mom. I would not uh, do that. Like if anybody did that to my mom, her. And 
Um, it's going to be hell to pay. I, I was like, look, I'll tell him. I, I, I needed to apologize. I told Corin, I was like, dude, you got to say sorry to my mom because you, you shouldn't have done that. He's like, okay. It seemed like it was like cool and it was like hard to get him. And then he did it and, and everything was fine. But that was just like one of those things that was like, what the fuck? Um, so that happened. So it was just a, a random attitude at that point. So so then, you know, November hits. I thought he did a great job. And, you know, I, I do I do have to, to give him credit. There was a, cook, a, a few scenes that he did really well on. And I told him that. I was like, dude, I was like, two of the best videos you shot were, were Psycho Brothers Tom's classes. Uh, I thought, you know, we pulled that off because I appreciate, you know, they acted in that and, and did a good job. And then um, when we did the divorce video, the divorce video was good all around. It's one of my favorite videos. Um, and I thought I did a good job shooting that, and, and I was very happy about it, and I told him, I was like, dude, I was like, really nice job. Um, so, you know, I was very complimentary about that. And then uh, we get to December, December's fine, I gave him a Christmas bonus, you know, extra $500 just cause. Um, and then, uh, then 2016 hit, and, and things started to change a little That's bit. That's where, uh... That too, and we'll get there. I mean, now that I think about it, he was even unhappy with the Christmas bonus I gave him. He was saying that it was... Not enough, like that. He was like, I think 500 bucks would be enough. This much, I mean, this Christmas bonus, or like some businesses, if this was for, it's like, I didn't need to give you a Christmas bonus at all. Like, he starts giving me, he, ga he, he just, gave like, it to the us. Side, it was like, even just a Christmas bonus, just like money, just handed to him, it wasn't enough. Like, he complained about that. It he like, gave it to him. That's like a bonus. Like, you get paid, and here's a Christmas right, bonus. Like you, That's a good thing. You, can, you don't ask for more. Christmas. You're not like, oh, you know, I wish this was $2,000. What? Well, like Jimmy down the street, you know, he got he got a thousand dollars for Christmas. I you only gave me five hundred, so fuck you then. You're harsh. You're a dick. No, like what? I, uh, God. You're the director. He can do whatever he wants, guys. You accept that. You don't complain. If, if, if any boss, if I wasn't his friend, if he actually had like a forty year old man, fifty year old man, who's been working for a corporation for years, and the man comes over and gives. Gives you a check for five hundred dollars for Christmas. You you don't be like, sir, this is not enough. Uh, my other job, I got paid this much for it. No, that's fucking disrespectful. No, someone that's gave you a gift out of their heart, out of the kindness of their heart, and you accept it. Doesn't matter how much it is. And it was like, you know, we're still grinding out videos, and I'm like, shit, you know, there's a few times, there's a few moments in the series where I'm like. That's the thing, guys. Yeah, I, I can use ideas. You don't complain ideas, so about a Christmas say, bonus and just say, no, you should pay me more. That's not how it works. He would know that I'd always be looking out for Larry for ideas, be looking at my dad and my mom for ideas, and he only gave like one or two ideas over the whole, what was it, maybe eight months that he worked, and it, it just sucked. It really sucked, and I, I really wish he, he gave more. So January came, February, we're doing the... Uh, Haunted series, which is a lot of fun. Me and Uncle Larry pretty much were heading that and coming up with all the cool little hauntings and things. And for, for some of the Haunted series, I was really oh, doing all that too. One of the benefits he, he, he likes to acknowledge is the fact that I pay for dinner almost every night um, in the Haunted series. And we get out of these all the fucking time because, you know, um, we are doing two videos and I made like a 15 minute drive. But uh, I was paying for dinners and that was part of it. If, if we ever had a shoot day that went longer than I expected, you know, I would always be buying meals. And, and there's a benefit in that. There's also the benefit where, where 2015, you know, I, I paid for all expensive paid trip to LA and the big time, we had a great time with that. Uh, we also had a great night, we went to New York City and that, and that was a fun experience. Um, so we're getting through the Aunt Jackie Wanted series and then uh, March came time, you know, it's time for the odd jobs, but there got to be kind of like this breaking point in the beginning of March uh, where I was going to go to Nashville with Juliet to uh, produce the song for the finale called Battle Cry. It was, you know, 100% a business trip. We're going, produce this thing, you know, make some vlogs uh, in the process because I got to get the videos out to you guys. I and remember that Cord uh, didn't want to go. Did not want to take me. I get, he thought he was being used, um, but I told him, I was like, dude, I was like, uh, this, I'm going on a five day business trip. You're about to get five days off paid vacation where I'm doing everything. You know, I'm, pro I'm produce, I'm helping produce I remember this that. song, funding the production of this song, and I'm going for five days. I'm doing all the videos. You, you get paid just to, to sit in the ass and do nothing. And you had a problem with driving 40 minutes to the airport. I remember that. I didn't even think he worked that day. I was like, dude, all you have to do is drive me to the airport and. I, I sure remember that, that part where he left his dad and would go over there. He thought he was going to stop him from going. I couldn't have my mom taking me. He 
start giving me shit in text, and I, and I would never like post text messages or anything on here. But then he's giving me a serious attitude, and I he finally agrees, and, and he and I get in the car, and dude's just silent. And I'm like, dude, what's wrong? So you know, I, I like things to be open and in a partnership and a business agreement, or even as best friends, you communicate and say what's going on, how you're feeling, and I would always encourage that. But in the 40 minute drive, the dude didn't say a fucking word. His hands on the steering wheel, like he's gonna rip the steering wheel off. Didn't say a word. I'm like, what's going on, man? I was like, I've never seen an attitude change. Like, what's up? Didn't say a word. And I was like, look, man, I, I, I don't know what's going on with you. You have me worried. I'm about to be going for five days. You're my best friend. You know, you've been with me through this journey. I was like, <coughs> what's wrong? Why are you acting this way? Why can't you open up to me? And I gave him a hug. I was like, dude, thank you for everything. I was like, please, like, text me while I'm on the trip. I, I need to know. And he did it. He didn't give a shit. Um. It wasn't until I came back where he said he wanted to raise, and I was like, I was raise? Like, I was like, I didn't know you fucking wanted to raise. Like, I, I was actually thinking about giving you a raise because we're, we're at this point in the series where we're, we're getting close to the wire, we're getting to the end here. I thought he had been doing a good job. I was gonna, I was gonna boost him up. So he was getting paid three grand a month. I told him, I was like, look, I said, you can't be able to talk to me about this kind of things. Because I, I thought it was a lot worse. Like, I thought he just fucking hated my guts or something, sort of resent me for whatever reason. And I told him, I was like, you know what, dude? And he didn't say this in his video. I cut him a check. I told him I, I'd pay you for, the, for this upcoming month, $7,500. Wow. <laughs> That's double his pay, plus a little extra, because I valued, I valued him. And uh, apparently, it, it just, it, it wasn't enough. It, he, 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 he almost like stifled his reaction. You know, normally you tell any rational human being that amount, and they'd be like, yeah, dude, thank you, dude, that would be awesome, like, yes. But he was just like, oh, let me talk to my parents. I was like, what? I was like, what? And it was like, weird shit like that. I don't that. get that. And, uh, I really don't. So then we got into the farming series. Hours became even less. It became like not even six hours. It was like four hour days. Like, there was a couple weeks. And I took notes. I don't get that. I really don't. My employees' performance. Usually your friends don't act that way. It's not just corn getting paid. You know, I, I paid Uncle Chris. I paid Anita and Nancy. And um, uh, you'll get more into that in depth in the documentary uh, that Brian is. I, I can't wait to see that. It's great to talk to you about that. But, um, can't wait for that. I also paid for an RV, a pool, multiple vehicles, consoles for giveaways and destruction, building a room. You know, I, 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 there's a lot of business expenses. Uh, you know, production of battle cry, which was a lot. You know, graphic design, that was a lot. Um, and for me to pay him 7500 I thought that, I don't know why he's bringing my agent into this. It doesn't even fucking, it's not even relevant. But yeah, I told him I'd pay him 7500 so that so the, so the next month comes, and, uh, oh, and I also forgot he got brand deals. He got, like, $500 for on the Overdrive deal, and he got, uh, like, $800 for an Audible deal. Um, so he, he's, getting, he's getting money from everywhere, and... Uh, it wasn't the enough. Month, the month goes by, farming series, and uh, we get we get to the tail end of it. End up working like four hour days. Like there was like a week or so where he pulled maybe twenty eight hour weeks, and this was that month that happened to fall in where he was getting paid seven thousand five hundred dollars. Which, mind you guys, that kind of monthly salary, <laughs> that's more than both my parents make monthly combined. And Corn was getting just to hold the camera. So I, I, you know, there's only so much I can do to, to please the guy. And um, so it got time to the end of the month. I wrote him the check and I handed it to him. Check for $7,500. And he was sitting on my bed. I remember he was sitting right there. Really smug look on his face. And I handed him the check and that was it. No thank you. He didn't say thank you. He, he didn't smile. He, it was like, it was just like, he took it, and I was like talking about like, what we need to do the next day and, and whatever. And and I always remember that. He didn't even fucking say thank you. Like he took every single thing for granted. And the irony is, is that he thinks he was taken for granted. But he get fucking seven thousand five hundred dollars for uh, twenty eight hour weeks, just holding a camera, doing as you told, and and you're kind of unmotivated, and you know you, you hardly say a word, and you're not on your phone a lot of the time. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a pretty good fucking gig. Um, that so is a good gig, guys. I, that is. So, also, this is what happens, guys. When you're working for somebody... I can see a change. I can see a change in behavior. Hey, guys, I just got a Twitter saying that he actually did a music video uh, for Juliet. Yeah, that's a funny idea. Really? I'm going to check that out later. Like, he'd actually motivated and everything, but it didn't happen. 
So after a week went by, and it seemed like his attitude was even worse, um, where I was like, look, dude, and hey, this, like, you know, it, it, su- it sucked for me to have to do this. And I was like, look, I was like, I can't afford to pay you this much, man. You know, those 28 eight hour weeks, and as a businessman, it's like, you know, I, 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 I can't, I, it just doesn't make sense. I'm losing money, you know, in terms of like effort versus how much you're paid, it, it, it's not there. And I told him, I was like, anyone could hold the camera. And, and I wasn't saying that to be rude, but it, it's a fact, like, to hopefully. Well, yeah, I, anybody can hold the camera, guys. That's like the, what the dad said on this. I don't take this for granted. Like, you know, I could have, I could have hired Tom, I, I could have hired somebody who has graduated with a film degree and has, has done, uh, you know, uh, or his brother. Or, We've know, seen his brother done, hold the camera uh, lots of times, bro. Um, this was like, in the beginning of the second series. <laughs> I, I, I need to appreciate it. This is very difficult to communicate with him. So I, I felt pretty bad, and, I, and I, I, I ended up deciding, you know what, dude, I'll, I'll pay you $3,500 for the following month. And at this point, we only had like two months left of the series, so it was also uh, a very different time. But I was like, dude, I'll pay you $3,500. We also got a brand deal coming up. Um, for, for that was the audible deal, and once you get an extra eighty hundred, eighty eight hundred dollars, um, so I thought that was good. And he just he seemed pretty upset. So then after a week after that, uh, I think we're maybe around like Wingless Eagle phase, yeah. And, and he says, I can't keep doing this. I need a raise. And it was like it was like he didn't even listen to what just happened. It's like he got paid that seventy five. I was like, oh, if I can get paid seventy five, I want to keep getting paid that. Like, I like this. Like, let me keep milking him for money. Like, Jesse's a nice. Let me take advantage of that. So it got to this point Man. where he's asking for more money. And guys, I don't know. You know, a lot of you guys are younger or whatever, but you don't ask your boss for a raise, and you also don't go against a contract that states are getting paid three grand for a year set. And I gave him seventy five hundred per month, and thirty five hundred was very agreeable. And, 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 I, and I, I gave him the opportunity to get to a point where he could earn more if he, if he brought the attitude and he brought the motivation, and the energy, and the passion. But he just didn't. And when I when I when I said that, like, like he, he worked for six months and he's expecting a, a raise after we just had a short conversation about. That's like a probation for a grocery thing. You gotta pass probation in order to get a raise. You work six like, months and you want to get a raise? I was like, dude, like, we, we, we just talked about this. Like, I, I love you to death, man, but I can't afford to pay you. Like, you remember, you're, you're working for Rigid Studios, and, and we need Rigid Studios to succeed. The Rigid Studios budget's getting stretched a mile because no fucking YouTube channel buys RVs and fucking pools to smash and makes no money back. So I'm like, look, dude, oh. like, there's a lot more at stake, and like, he didn't see big picture, and he just wanted more and more. And it, it got to be very frustrating. So I told him, I was like, look, man, your character technically gets written off in the series. So, and that's in, in a few weeks. Hang on until then. And he asked, well, I can't get paid more. I like time off. Um, and I told him, I was like, you will have time off. Like, you'll be written off. We'll have maybe four or five days, technically paid. Um, and then we got, so we got the finale. Like, we're coming up in the finale. And we're coming up on VidCon. And, uh... So, so that's where we're at, and then, then he has the shittiest attitude going forward, where he's just not even doing stuff. And, and I forgot to mention that, yeah, he he did. There was a time where he moved fan mail uh, for when we had to do the incineration and move into the cubby. That was like one night, maybe it took like two hours or whatever. Took two hours. Yeah, I was Sheesh. Him. I couldn't move the boxes. I physically couldn't. Trust me, if I physically could, I would do everything because that's how I am. I fucking do everything. And, you know, he moved my laundry bin maybe, what, all three times and acts like it was like, oh, oh, like it was like working so fucking hard, but like some Come on, it's just a like, laundry basket, away. come on. Ass, and it's like he complains about... Well, it's like, it's like he hasn't moved the laundry basket in a long time. It takes maybe 15 seconds to do or moving a, a heavy fan mail box. It takes yeah. maybe, you know, an hour to move all the boxes and then that's it. Either so put up or shut up. Like very privileged and... You know, I don't want to be name calling or saying anything out of place, but like he did call me a dick and insinuated that I was manipulative and whatever, and, and he, he, he's saying these things. But like, I do feel that at times he, he was getting very entitled, um, and, and it's sad. It's sad that it got to that point. It was very petty. It was pitiful. It's a shame that it couldn't be appreciated. Um, Man, the that's crazy. That we were both given. 
And that's why I you guys wonder why I don't? I, I watched the core, uh, core about why I quit part one and two, but I I didn't want to react to it because I want to get his side too. Because I had a feeling that this is what he was talking about. That's like thousands, thousands, and thousands of dollars. You know, if it was a ten grand, um, that's to replace the the, out, the above ground. We didn't get in ground, which is fucking like thirty grand. And um, Sheesh, that's a lot we, for a pool. We could destroy it, and I, I'm shooting BTS, but you guys will see that uh, at some point once the dock is out. And he um, he's filming BTS, and he's got money in his pocket. It's the first thing he's got to film today. We're only shooting for like maybe two or three hours this day. And he's got his hand in his pocket, and he's doing a one-hand thing, like he doesn't give a shit. Like he could have a fucking beer in one hand, which he had, you know, drank on, well, on during a filming day before. And, and I just asked him, and, I, and you'll see the behind the scenes eventually. So I'm not making this shit up, you know. You can believe Corey or whatever because he spoke first, but like I'm spitting it out through, guys. Uh, I was like, Corey, I was like, could you put two hands on the camera, please? I was like, you know, this is this is your job. And he literally, it comes back. The middle finger comes back, and he flips me off, flips his boss off, also his best friend, and it was, like, pretty serious, and I was like, really? I was like, you just flipped me off? And, and what Corden doesn't know is I wanted to fire him, like, a bunch of different times, because I had never felt so, un un I felt unappreciated, I felt disrespect from everyone on his fucking phone, I felt there's a lot of people that could do his job better, and, and that, that we're, huh. we're just better all around, even creatively, um, so I wanted to fire him, but I knew, I was like, fuck. You know, this is, he, he's locked in, we can't have a change now. So, so that having flipped me off, and I was like, ah, oh my god. I, you know, as horrible as it sounds, I want to punch him in the dick. <laughs> I just said dick because it's funny, but I'm not a pussy like that. I would punch him in his face, but, um, <laughs> what the hell? Like, you know, who, who does that? Just flips him off like that. I'm just filming a video. And, um, we shot it. Everything's cool. Flash forward a couple weeks, uh, so Corey gets written off, you know, he gets, he gets yelled at my dad, you know, that was always going to happen in the story, you know, I lost like 10,000 10, subs, which would just fucking blows, because people, you know, thought it was real, and that, that is what it is, but, um, it sucks, uh, Corey was off for like, many days towards the end, where I was just shooting videos in the small room downstairs, losing my mind, uh, you'll see in the behind the scenes how I shot those all, and, and how difficult it was for me. And I did this all myself, and, and that's totally fine. So he had a lot of days off. At this point, I think he's got this new girlfriend in the picture that's like living with him. And, uh, uh, and so I know, you know, Corden for his girls, it's not really my place to say, but like this was a big deal for him, the fact that he had a girlfriend. And I, and I was happy, you know, I'm, I'm really glad that he found somebody that he really cared about and that he loved, but not gonna lie, he was like hosed before bros. Like he didn't give a shit anymore about his job. The wow. Series, me. <laughs> It was all this, all this girl, and I understood that because, like, I think yeah, come on, if you got a girlfriend, you got to put all your attention on your girlfriend. Um, so you know, like, you like Jesse with Juliet. I asked him, I was like, you come over and help me write some. Uh, I'm a psychopath on the on the board, and he, and he got some markers for me, and he did that, and um, really. Time. Once again, one of the benefits he's neglecting, and I think he talked about it, he wasn't really excited this for Switzerland. Uh, he, he could have told me that. He could have told me that more and been open about communication. Once again, he wasn't very good at that. So, all expenses paid trip to Switzerland. We're talking thousands of dollars. Um, one of the benefits, neglected. Um, so, I hadn't seen him for a day or two. He had a few days off before the marker situation. It all paid and, and comes over and we're having a family discussion. Not only about Psycho Kid Flea's country, but as a trip as a whole, because we're going international, you know, we have to not only, we have to take a flight out to Switzerland. And I'm sure a lot of people are twittering to you right, tweeting at you right now. And, and <laughs> the hardest part about Psycho Kid Flea's country, we're shooting it all on the go. There's no room for errors. Like, we got to hit these shots. I had this whole shot list made up, and I was going over that with him at, outside on the patio, and I was like, come on, pay attention. I was like, look, this is what you need to bring on Blair. You need to pack the news on the plane. You're going to be that guy. Or I was like, Dad, you need to bring the tripod, or this, this you need to bring, you know, whatever. And the whole time Corey's on his fucking phone, he's texting the girl that he just left. Like, he couldn't even give me one or two hours as part of his job to talk about the culmination of the finale. And guys, interestingly enough, also, was me, Jeffrey, and my dad shot me shooting my father. You know, part the, one of the, the culmination of the fucking series. And we shot that the day before, so Corn comes, and we're talking about the Second Fleece Country. 
He didn't once, he didn't fucking once ask, how did the shoot go? How did you kill your father? You know, the only thing we've been working towards for the last year or so. You know, how did that go? Because I care. I care at least a little bit to ask. Even if I didn't care, at least I care enough to ask. He didn't give a shit. He did not give a fuck. I killed my dad. We all did that. He didn't give a shit. He didn't even give a shit for about anything besides the girl at that point. Fucking sucks. Didn't even ask. And that hurt a lot. You know, he was with me throughout the whole journey. Didn't even give a shit about the characters, the story, anything. Anything that we were working towards. He just wanted to get back to the girl. And he wanted to get a lot more money. Green. The paid a lot more and, uh, money, I disagree. So me, I but the girl part, like that's his own life. He has his own life. Totally just me like that's his, own, that's his life right the, there. Uh, so I'm going to talk about this. This is going to be a very long reaction video, guys. I'm going to cover a lot in this. Really? He said that after we're talking about all expense paid trip to Switzerland, the ending of the series, and he says, what a fucking waste of time. It was two hours after having like four or five days off just because you can't, what, see the girl. I, very frustrating. So after, Uncle Larry told me that. I mean, Uncle Larry, you know, was actually kind enough to not call him out there. He, he could have. Um, he could have, but that's so, uh, going to be disrespectful. Yeah, I mean, because he's not, he shouldn't like, be part of that. Jesse's the director of it. And I've expressed my feelings towards a lot of family members and stuff. And you may think, like, oh, it's just because Jesse's family and stuff, but it's like, no. Like, there was a There's a matter of guys about that. They've been friends for a long time. Uh, Stalkers aren't family, and it's like, they, they saw it too, where it's just like, he didn't give a shit. Um, it's a hard person to get close to. So, um, so that happened. I got it. I started to panic a little bit because I was like, Jesus. I was like, Corn, I, don't, I feel like he's not going to be capable to film the finale. So I called him the day before we leave, and I said, hey man, I was like, you excited? Because I was pretty excited, like Switzerland's down low, and I was excited for this thing to be over. And I would love, I, I, well, Switzerland sounds like a great place to go. To I would love to be there. He's excited, he's just like, for what? And I just wanted to slap him. I said, I slapped to a, a virtual slap in the phone, and I was like, I said, dude, we're going to the Switzerland, everything we've worked towards, it's finally ending. Um, and then we can be free and do whatever kind of content we want, and it's going to be a lot more laid back, and, and he's just like, yeah, I'm not even packed yet. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, dude, I just wanted to say, um, thank you for everything, and, and dude, I want to incentivize this finale for you. Um, I want to give you a big bonus if, if, if we can pull this off. And he was like, oh, cool. I don't know if that was a real response or not, but he's like, okay, cool. And I was like, sweet man, I was like, come here at this time, and then we're off, we're going to Philly. Both to Switzerland, it's a long flight, there for a week in the mountains, it's beautiful, shoot the finale. And he was like, alright, bye. So I was like, feeling pretty good, I was like, okay, sweet. He's, he's, he's good for the finale, you know. Um, and then, wouldn't you know it, all ready to go, an hour before we're supposed to leave for Switzerland, he sends me a text message. And if that just doesn't say he's a coward, I don't know what does. It's a fucking text message. And it's, it's not even as lengthy as it could have been, where he has nerve to say, not only does not get paid enough, but he brings my parents into it, which I'm not going to say what it is he compared it to or what he said, but he brought my parents into it, which I thought was really inappropriate and unnecessary and immature. And then he, he, he talks and he talks about um, just getting a raise and it's like money this, money that. After I just said I'd give him a bonus for the finale and, and, and not only that, all expense paid in Switzerland. And then after that, two weeks off. Two full weeks off because we had 16 one minute videos that were going to be prepared to come out during that time. So two weeks off, all expense paid trip to Switzerland on top of getting paid for that month. And then an all expenses paid trip to Los Angeles and VidCon tickets and the time of his life. And he says, uh, he's uh, not satisfied. It's not enough for him. So he sent me that text, and Jesse trying to be the bigger man, I said, I, I understand. We'll talk when we get back. But really, you know, I'm feeling inside. I have very good self-control and, and uh, self-restraint, um, which I hate that to do this video right now, because if it were up to me, I would have ignored it. But unfortunately, people would have thought I was uh, running away from it, which isn't the case. Um, 
But yeah, he did that. And I was like, fuck. I was like, fuck, he screwed me. And I, and I saw in his video, he thought I was going to come and, and, and what, like offer him more money? Like it was almost like blackmail away, where it's like, I'm not going to do this finale until it was like he's having a mini strike right at the fucking finale because he wouldn't get paid enough. It's ridiculous, I think, as you can tell now. And uh, I was like, fuck. I was like, he really fucked this over. An hour before he's supposed to leave, we're supposed to leave for Switzerland. And not only that, guys, I can't refund that ticket. I can't refund that Los Angeles ticket. I lost a few thousand dollars because he quit. Not to mention he breached a two-year contract, which completely, you know, fucked himself and fucked me over. After, you know, wanting job security, he ends up only working for eight months and quitting after being paid a decent amount and getting a YouTube channel, which he's still posting on. And it, it's just, it's very frustrating. Um, wow. So that happened, and luckily Jeffrey, awesomest fucking brother I could ever ask for, hey. fucking killed it. He, uh, it's good to have family play, guys. Play, if said, hey, if he's not gonna do it, man, then I'll do it for you. I'll, I'll, I'll hold the camera for it's you, good to have brothers, guys. And me and Jeffrey, Siblings you know, are the best. The finale was beautiful. And it just goes to show that you know he can be replaced. Jeffrey fucking killed it, man, kill it. And I told him I was like, Jeffrey, thank you so much. I gave him my Canon 70D. Yeah, I gave him a thousand dollars just to thank you because it was like wow. Like, and it was super clutch. So, you know, Switzerland was a thing, and we were all very hurt. It was like a, it was a giant fuck you to me, and it was a fuck you to my whole family. Because we welcomed him in, you know, we all were part of this production, and it quit the last fucking second, and has a fuck you, like more middle fingers all around. That's why. And, and, and you see on Glad on Twitter, guys, like, you under, gotta understand, like, there's a lot we haven't talked about, and it's just, it's frustrating. His um, perceptions and things, and it's just you guys don't know. Um, so Switzerland goes by, um, and I come back. And if he did, if he wasn't surefire about quitting, like I said, I've had thoughts about firing him. So like when I thought, like, when he came in, I was very respectful. I was like, "Is this for you? Sure, this is what you want?" He's like, "Yes, I want to quit." I'm being paid. I was like, "I respect that." And you know, I cut him the checks he deserved uh, or that, that he needed to for his final months. And then I also, you know, wrote him a check for $6,000, which once again, this was something that I helped him with some investments that he would have never otherwise knew or understood. So I made him another six grand just, you know, because, because I'm a nice guy and, and uh, I wanted to get him in on something. But uh, it's whatever, you know. Um, so so uh, I, I hugged him and like, thank you for your work, dude. I was like, it, it, you know, it's a shame, but our spouse was like, what are you doing now? And he said, I'm going to be a cop. But then I also asked him, I was like, you can do YouTube videos? He said, yes. I don't know about you, but I don't think he's being a cop right now. Looks like he's just using his YouTube channel, which kind of sucks because it's there because of, of what we did together. And it's kind of like, a, once again, like, sorry, Jess. You know, uh, um, but, yeah, I asked him. I was like, did you watch the finale? Did you watch Second Kid Please Country? He's like, nah. Really? I didn't watch the finale. I didn't even watch the thing that he was supposed to do with me. And uh, it sucked. It really sucked to hear that. He didn't even watch it. He didn't even care enough. He, and, and, and maybe he lied. Maybe he lied just to say that. I don't know. He didn't watch it. He didn't watch it. It's just fucking so frustrating. Very frustrating. Um, the one person who was like getting paid to do it, and he, and he just didn't even give a shit. So after that, um, skip some time ahead, and uh, you know Brian's in town trying to get an interview. He didn't want to do it. Um, huh. I asked him he wanted to. He didn't want to do it. Um, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I reached out to him not too long ago where, you know, because I, I, I've had some shit happening with friends, you know, I, I had my, my best friend at one point, uh, you know, she, she, uh, had fucked, he fucked my girlfriend in my very own bed, and you know what, we ended up, uh, uh, I forgave him for that at a certain point, because, like, I never, I'm the type of person that never wants somebody upset with them or, or mad at them, you know, I, I like to... Uh, make people happy and entertain them and, and be friendly. So like, I reached out to Corn and I was like, look, dude. I was like, I know I was passionate. I know I was assertive. And uh, I never said anything like negative to him or, you know. And I, and I just said some nice things to him. And, you know, would, I would never, I would hate to see a friendship go to waste. Oh, wow, would, would friend of yours? Like, shit. Slept with your girl? Besides, I mean, not Juliet? Really? That's one thing about friends, guys. 
was like all or nothing, so he didn't give a shit about anything else. And and then, you know, four months later, after it happens, he makes a video, uh, you know, calling me a dick and, and manipulative and not giving the full truth. And it sucks. You know, I, I can easily say, like, yeah. Um, yeah, he's this, he's really that. Serious. I got really passionate when it came to telling my story, but, you know, there's things to get done, but it never crossed the line. And, um, you know, you could ask anyone, and it's different. He's the only one that defected. I mean, the only other one was Jeffrey's ex, but, you know, she was, you know, bash of cray, but that's another story for another <laughs> time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to see that. <laughs> uh, yeah, he didn't even fucking respond to it, and then the next thing you know, he comes out with a video, and he says it was because people have been asking him, but and that's not true. People have been asking him since day one why he quit. And I just gave him the benefit of the doubt. I was like, he'll talk about it if he wants to, but until then, I'm just going to say he wanted to be a cop. Because the, the full truth... Boy, everyone's not, tweeting uh, at you, huh? What? <laughs> it's just hard for me... Let's hope you win that streaming. ...in person and a, and a driven person. And um, why, why he would be so upset. You know, you're filming with your best friend. You're getting paid a lot of money. You're getting a lot of fame, too, in the process. You have your own channel, your own Twitch... You're getting to travel all over, you know, go to Switzerland, all paid for, you're getting meals paid for. Um, and at times he, he was talking about, like, oh, health benefits or, or, or comparing benefits, and he acted like that was a big deal. But it sounded like he was echoing his parents, because realistically, he's going to be on his parents' health insurance plan for the next two years or so. So it's not even, like, overlapping our contract. And it was something that he knew going into it, he wasn't going to get those things. So he's trying to manipulate the situation and, and try to get more uh, gain. And, um... <sighs> oh, your best friend on the camera getting to sleep in every day. There's so many cool things that I feel like anybody would jump on this opportunity in a heartbeat. So for him to take that for granted, it just doesn't make sense to me. And maybe it doesn't make sense to a lot of you guys. Which is why you're probably like, I, yeah, I don't get it either. What the fuck? Uh, somebody must be buying or something. But it's like, well, why? Why? And I'm sure a lot of you guys would love to, to work with me or um, be a part of the series. And I do want to open it up to the fans. I mean, I've opened it up to the fans in the past. Uh, and I really want to hold auditions for this thing, and um, I, I want people who are passionate. I think ultimately that is is the ticket to here. Is he, he just wasn't in? His heart wasn't in it. His heart wasn't in it, and it, it, it became only about the money uh, because you know there was nothing else keeping him tied to it, and it was his friend and me. And I don't, I don't know. And that's where we're at now. I didn't want to do this video because he might do a video back, and then it just becomes his playing more, and then he gets attention to his channel, and it's just it's just stupid. It's immature. I hate this happening. But that's the story with Corn. And ultimately, you know, you guys, I wanted to tell my story because I hate for. for it's good to have two sides of the story, guys. Have, it's good to have two. You can find some truth in all this. Both sides is and, always good. Um, yeah, guys. Like, like, ultimately, his just heart wasn't in it. He wanted more money, and he just wasn't a creative person. And in this line of work, you know, there's a lot of people that would jump on an opportunity like this to work on the Psycho Series or work on the series we have coming up in the future. And uh, he was missing a lot of marks, and, and uh, I, I, I don't know. I, there's a lot of things I can't put a finger on. It, 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 he was a very quiet person, unmotivated, and it was hard to get inside his head. He just didn't communicate that effectively. Um, Ultimately, you know, it, it was a biz, it was a business, and, and it was a partnership, and they say you shouldn't get in the business with friends, and, and it's a shame. It's a shame to see the friendship deteriorate like that. But, but you know what? You know, Bridges Studios is going to continue all onward. You know, he, he's got his life, and, and truly, I hope he's happy, and, and I hope you're content, man. If you, you watch this video, you know, um, no hard feelings. It, it, it is what it is. I've had a lot of time to reflect on it, and it's just like that that has become part of this this history now, and. Uh, Best of luck to you, man, whatever you do. And um, I I'm very happy. Mid you know, we're meant to go, guys. Uh, I'm very happy with Parker. Parker's like everything I want. He he's very dynamic personality. He he's picking up the camera very well. It's pretty well. good. He, um, he looks a lot more very vocal very than Corn was. Creative ideas, so I'm, I'm very happy uh, that we have Parker now. I'm excited for the future. You know, I love you guys so much. Uh, thanks for listening to this because, you know, uh, you definitely probably take whatever it's doing grain of salt, but this is real me, and this is the real truth. That's what happened, and you'll see in the behind the scenes, and you'll hear about it in the documentary, and um, that's it, guys. Don't forget to subscribe for content. Twitter, Instagram, links in the description. Drop a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Um, no hate at all. Um, you know, I guess everything happens for a reason, and uh, that's that.
All right. I work 11 to 8 tomorrow, guys, so I'll make sure to do that for you. Well, well, you know, I, I had a subscriber say, why don't you react to Korn's channel? And to tell you the truth, I, I wanted to do that, but it, it seemed like a little too long for me to do that. Um, I mean, I, I, you guys see that I react to everything else, but maybe I should have done that for that, but... Guys, I have seen the uh, uh, Corns video. He said that he was a dead. He's saying that he, for me working long hours, I mean, doing two videos a day, I mean, that felt like it was too much for me. So I, I just needed my own time. I needed my own uh, freedom. I wanted to be uh, something. Uh, I, I hope that I was going to get something a lot better than this. But this is your friend we're talking about. You guys have been friends for a long time. A long time. And now you're just saying that he's this, he's that after that long period. Ever since when you worked with him. I mean, that's the thing, guys. I mean, the one thing about friends, that's what he was talking about. That I think that's where you actually find out who your real friends are. Like with him, for example, when he just said that, he found out that his friend slept with his uh, uh, girlfriend. That was that. That was uh, before Juliet. And after when, if you guys remember watching the Q and A uh, about love, uh, with those two talking about it, and when in the within the Psycho series, they said that um, they both knew exactly uh, that they were meant for each other, or they had a lot in common. That they were both they both got cheated on. And I mean, look at them. They're still going strong with each other, and that's a good thing, guys. But as for Korn, um, for Korn to have a new girlfriend, I, I understand that. That for one thing, guys, um, if you're with uh, if you're with somebody and you really care about them, and if you're going to spend like long, long hours not seeing this, seeing somebody, um, I think that's where you draw the line. But he did sign a contract and he had to follow the rules, guys. That that was the point of this story, in my opinion, guys, but uh, you guys, uh, you guys might comment on that, about that, if, uh, if you have a new, sp if you have, like, a new boyfriend or girlfriend, would you stop what you're doing, uh, when you're working with somebody like this guy, and just focus on your life, uh, you can, but it's not, but you're getting close to the finale, somewhere that it's over, if, if that person actually, um, uh, understands knowing that you're actually getting ready to uh, you're doing this working two days I mean work from a two day two videos and doing all this you kind of think that she would that person would understand who said okay go on and, and I'm sure that they see each other all the time that's that's why I don't get um, what were we talking about uh, next thing we're talking about money Corn gets paid three thousand dollars every month. To me, guys, that's pretty good. That's like, um, um, like working like a, a certain job, and you can make that much by working all that weeks. But it's that's like three months of hard work. Three months of hard work. If we're going to grocery business, I think that's how that's how it is. But for me, I make a lot more than that, so. It, it would take me two months to make. It, it would take me a month and a half to make three grand. That's easy for me. Um, as for a construction worker, it would take uh, four months, four weeks. I should know because my dad and my brother are both construction workers, and that's how and that's how it is. Um, but for him to ask for a raise every single time within six months, six months, really? Usually you gotta wait at a certain time, like a year, or this guy acts like like what Jesse said. He gets like uh, automobile things. He's got like airfares, things like that. They get he gets in, in, endorsed and uh, uh, whatever that is, guys gets all that stuff from everybody, and he wasn't satisfied. That's the thing, guys. When there's money involved, you're hoping that you will get a lot more. You kind of hope that you will get all that, but. 
at a certain point in time, if you want more, that's the one thing that's going to stay in your mind all through your life. If you're working for somebody like somebody. But for Jesse, Jesse asked his best friend, Corn, they've been friends for that long time, will you be like a cameraman? He said, sure, okay. Then, as time goes by, he changed. He said he was quiet. He's like, dude, we were very talkative. We've been friends for a certain period of time, and now all of a sudden you've been quiet all this time. You're starting to be quiet. You're not like expressing like all this stuff. I mean, that's the thing, guys. I think we've seen a lot in those videos that at a certain point, uh, Corn was not in it. You notice that Corn doesn't talk a lot, and it, like the thing, uh, say about this, guys, because Corn. You see him smiling, you see him do all that. Maybe he was just acting. He was actually the fact that maybe he was uh, a little upset or unhappy knowing the fact that um, that I should get more than for this because I'm working my butt off holding this camera for this guy and do all this. But he's under contract, guys. He says that you're going to get paid at, the cert at this much every, every month and you have to do this and you have to do that. When you sign a contract, guys, you have to follow the contract. At certain point, certain points, Jesse actually gave him a bonus, five hundred dollars. That's a lot of money, guys, for a Christmas. You know what I get, guys, for my Christmas bonus? I get paid five hundred bucks too. I even I, I was this close. I actually, at one point, I did work on Christmas Day, but it was uh, it was just bagging. That was it. But I I just did for a little bit. I worked from from like eleven to three. The store was gonna actually close around four. Because as you know, guys, there's a lot of people who are do a last minute uh, saying, I gotta get this. I gotta, gotta get extra gravy. Gotta get extra cranberry sauce. All that other stuff, guys. That's a bonus. Five hundred dollars. That's pretty good. In my opinion, that's a, that's pretty good. It's just, like, yeah. He said, "Hey, my boss will give you will give me a thousand. Maybe you should have gave me a lot more." It's like, I, he, he just, he, your friend just gave you five hundred bucks bonus, and you're asking him you should have given me more. That's not a friend, guys. This guy, this friend, this guy wanted more money, and that's it, and that's all he cared about. For it, I like to stop, talk about the one where when the mom called call and said, "Aren't you supposed to do this and that?" and Court actually flicked her, flicked her off. It was like, who does that? If my friends ever did that to my my mom, I'm gonna, I will make sure that, that they they give her an apology because that's very disrespectful. You don't do that. If if you have friends, if if your friends do that to their mom, to your mom, I'm sure you guys would not stand for that. But I'm a, I just don't understand this. I I guys, I did see Corns Part One and Two on why I quit. At certain points, I, I understand. At certain that he should get a little bit of raise because he's doing two videos every day, and after that, he had to. Uh, take him to this place, they gotta take him to that place, you gotta do it at a certain angle, and everything that, but, the one thing that, I don't think Corner understands that, you're working with a director, you're working with a film maker, you're working with somebody who is making videos on life, on, on his series that he does, he wants it to be perfect for his audience. That's how directors work, guys. That's how film directors work. I mean, if you guys ever seen the behind the scene, like behind the scenes, or um, like a documentary about how directors do their jobs, like Steven Spielberg, he works hard and he makes one of the best films ever. And Clint Eastwood, <coughs> he's an actor and he does direct. He writes a story. At a certain point, do you think that a guy that does three things at once in order to make a movie do you think that he wants to make sure it's perfect of course 
But think about this, guys. He had two movies, <coughs> or maybe three. It might be three. I, I could be wrong. He had some movies that were that won for best picture, won for best director. Clint Eastwood won for Unforgiven. He won. He won another director's award for Million Dollar Baby. That was a, those two great films. He starred in it and he wrote it. Uh, both stories. He wanted to make sure it's perfect. He wanted to make sure he has the right cameraman. He wants to make sure that uh, people do their jobs and having hiring actors to do the right jobs and do it perfectly. That's how Jesse is. Jess, that's what Jesse's doing. Jesse wants to make sure everything is perfect. And if Corn was really that quiet all through, you can actually tell by the videos and everything. When did he start to do start thinking about this? <coughs> he said that at that moment, that was when he flicked him flicked his mom off during the construction in October. That was around Halloween. So that was that's when uh, jet that's when the Psycho Family Halloween uh, video came out at that month. So. Whatever happened, I think that's when Corn realized that I'm working hard for this guy, and three thousand dollars a month is not going to cut it. I need, I deserve to get more. I mean, he just signed on. Within six months, he wants to get enough, gets a raise, and he wants to get more money. It's like, well, guys, I think uh, like, the moral of the story in this that. Be careful who your friends are, because one day they're going to stab you in the back, or they'll hurt you. And then one day you're actually going to find out who your real friends are. And just don't, make sure you have both eyes open, because it doesn't matter if you're being nice, you're, you're like, I'm a nice guy, I'll just let it slide. Don't be that way, because you're going to let them push you around, and one day... You're going to look back and say, wait a minute, this, this guy looks like he's using me. I, I, I hate that. Always think about that first. Think about like what you're hearing. Think about what's really true or what's really the real truth about your, what your friend is actually asking for. Bravo to Jeffrey, though. He would have went to Switzerland. One of the, like, from the looks of the video, one of the most beautiful places ever. Paid trip. Paid. He says, okay. Then the next day, nah. I changed my mind. Sounds familiar to me. That sounds like for me, like, when, it's like when you ask somebody for help, he says, sure, I'll be there for you. And as you're getting ready to work, you're calling and saying that, uh, where are you, man? I, I just started. He says, no, nah, I'm not coming. I, I got something else planned. It's like, wait a minute, you said you were coming over, and now you're telling me that you're not coming? It's like, it's like that saying, guys, if you want something done, do it yourself. And Jesse, you did a lot by yourself, and that was pretty good, but it's good to have a brother who is there to record everything. He, ma he made the best video ever, Flea's Country, all thanks to him. And one of the best endings ever. I don't know if Corn if Corn actually did see it. Maybe he didn't want to say, "Nah, nah, I didn't see it." It's like, of course I did see it. It's like maybe he, it would feel bad. But from the looks of it, I don't think he feel, doesn't feel bad at all. I agree with Corn on some points about being with a girlfriend or having a girlfriend. You want to make sure that you spend a lot of time with her or him. I, I put the I put the. Uh, a girl's perspective, if ever a girl's a cameraman, a camerawoman, and has a boyfriend, and you want to make sure that you want to spend all your, focus all your attention on that person. <coughs> that's the thing. When you have a relationship, that's how it is. When he was talking about, I know how relates, uh, when people do YouTube, relationships like break up, things like that. There's one that I'm sure you guys know of, Prank versus Prank, with Jesse, with Jess, Jesse and Gina, 
They pulled pranks on each other, but they said that when they kept doing vlogs so many times, they didn't have much time about their life, and they broke up. But at one video, it was cool that he, was, he said, I'm getting ready to go to the movies. Oh yeah, there's one person I, I asked to come. Well, here they come now. And there was Gina saying, here I am, I'm here. It's cool that they're still friends. But everyone's hoping that they will get back together. But for this, it's going to take time. If Korn does see this video, I have a feeling that he will make a reaction video to it and put his opinion on it. But I don't know, guys. Only time will tell. That's what they always say. Well, guys, thank you for watching this very, very long reaction video. This is the longest I've ever done in my life. <laughs> don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more reactions, more gameplay. Drop a like on this video if you enjoyed this. If you agree with me on some points, uh, be sure to comment on me. I'm sure you're just saying, man, I hate hearing... I, I, I'm a lot, I have a lot of subscribers saying, quit talking about how your life is or how like, you try to take one side and make it into a scene on the other side. Stay in, stay in the, within the story. I'm, pro I'm trying to prove a point. I'm using examples. If you don't like it, don't comment me. Okay? I'm just giving you guys just a heads up, alright? I'm used to that. Well, guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget, stay positive. And I I'm really sorry I didn't react to the Corns video because I had a feeling that he was going to talk about it. But I did watch it. I, I couldn't be able to make a reaction video about it because I, I was too busy working. But, you know what, guys? It was worth it. I watched it. I listened to him. Both sides, both have good points, and, and it's just at a certain point, enough is too much. That's all I can say. Well, guys, thank you for watching, and don't forget, stay positive.